By now, you must have heard about Nano Banana, but did you know you can now use it inside Photoshop? In the video today, I'm going to show you how to find it in Photoshop and how to use it to get some really insane results. I'm also going to show you the benefits of using it inside Photoshop over using it in the Gemini app. Let's get into it. Finding Nano Banana inside Photoshop is actually really easy, but you do have to make sure that you've got the beta version of Photoshop downloaded. As this is the area that you can access Nano Banana. Now, when you've actually got the beta version of Photoshop downloaded, all you need to do is actually access it in this contextual bar here. But first off, you're going to need to make a selection of something so that you can actually tell it that you need to use the generation model Nano Banana. So I'm going to click around this car here, drag around, and you will see that now I've done this, it gives me a few options. I've got generative fill, and when I click on this, we get this G here, which shows up. Click on the G, and then you can see that we have different models which we can use. We have Firefly 3, the image of Firefly 1 model, Flux Context Pro, which I might go into in this video, but it's not as good as Nano Banana. And finally, Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana. So when you click on that there, this now means that you're using the Nano Banana image model inside Photoshop. Now, Nano Banana allows you to make incredibly impressive image generations and image edits. But when you couple this with Photoshop, you're able to use their impressive range of selection tools to really precisely select the area that you want that generation or that edit to take place. So let's show you some impressive use cases of this actually working inside Photoshop. Let's go back to this original image of the selection that we made around the car with the lasso tool. Now, what I want to tell it to do is to change this car into another car. And we're going to do this using the Nano Banana image model. So the prompt I'm going to use for this is this one here. This is going to be change the Audi car into a Jeep and keep the rest of the image unchanged. So I'm going to copy this and then simply add this into the prompt area here. Now I've done this, let's hit generate and let's see the result. And there we go. Look at the Jeep. You can see that all of the color in the image completely matches the color in the background. And you can see that the Jeep actually looks like it really belongs there. So using Nano Banana in this case, it's able to use the environment and then to make these really lifelike changes. Now, even though this does a fantastic job, sometimes I find around the image, you can get issues with the blending of both images together. But let me show you how you can take care of this easily. What I like to do is just come to the lasso tool here, zoom into the area which I want to change, and then simply make a selection around it. Now I've done that, I'm just gonna go into generative fill. I'm gonna go into the Firefly 3 model, and then generate. And what this does is it uses the Firefly 3 model to just make little fixes to the area which is not right. And there you go. That's now taken care of that little area which we needed to fix inside this generation. So inside Photoshop, using these selection tools to choose the specific area is incredibly powerful. Now you can see an example here. I've got this old man which is sitting at the dock. I generated this image with Nano Banana, but now I want to change specific areas. So you can see here is the area which I selected, and then this is what I generated. You can see he's now wearing sunglasses. Now you can do this with all kinds of things. So if I wanted to get the sunglasses off him, and I wanted to turn him into, let's say, a clown, then I could do that. I now have the old man sitting by the dark fishing in clown makeup. A bit strange, I know. But then I've decided, actually, I don't want him as a man. Let's use Nano Banana to change him into a woman by making a selection around the face and then changing him into a woman. So now I want to show you a really incredible example of using the Photoshop and Nano Banana together and just what kind of amazing results you can get. So take a look at this. We've got this really moody image here, which is of this neon lights lighting up this streetway. And what we're going to do here is we're going to provide it with a prompt, which is a little bit crazy, but you take a look at the result and see what you think. So first off, I'm going to draw an area which I want my subject to show up in. So I'm going to do that here. And now let's show you the prompt that I'm going to use. Prompt is 
generate a photorealistic bioluminescent whale hovering midair in this urban alleyway. Make sure its wet skin reflects the color of the neon signs from the buildings and casts an accurate shadow onto the wet pavement. Now, this is quite a prompt, I think you'll agree, but let's just see how good this can be at generating prompts with the selection tools inside Photoshop. I'm gonna copy and paste this, and then let's add that in and generate. And take a look at that. Look how cool that looks. So we've got this whale here, which is dripping water. You've got this reflection underneath, which looks quite insane. And it's actually reflecting all of the light around it from these neon lights in the tattoo studio. So you can see, you can get really imaginative with this and you can create some really incredible results. Now, another amazing thing you can do is actually generate stylized logos, graphics, and typography. And using Photoshop, you can choose the areas that you want to add this to things like posters, t-shirts, and all other kinds of different media. So let's take this t-shirt design, for example. I could just choose a selection tool. In this case, I'll go for the elliptical marquee tool. I can choose to get a circle like this and drag it to a certain area that I want this logo or text to show up. I could then go to generative fill and then I could add in the prompt. And then if I press generate, let's see how it works. Okay, so I've now got this Arcade Dreams text, which is spelled perfectly correctly and all of the text works well, but we do have this strange dark area around the outside of our selection. So once again, we can go into a Photoshop selection tool and we can take care of this. So I'm just gonna go into the magic wand tool here, click on the area I want to remove, make sure I'm on the mask, and then it's gonna remove this color from the outside. So I can then press on Alt Delete to remove that, Control D, and then we now have this really nice Arcade Dreams text. So now we've done that, the power of having Nano Banana in Photoshop is we can change the perspective, we can change the size, and we can change this pretty much in any way we want to. Because we've used this selection tool with Nano Banana inside Photoshop. So what do I think about Nano Banana being inside of Photoshop? Well, actually, I think it's great for a few reasons. It's brilliant because they both complement each other. And let's be honest, Firefly, their model, Firefly 3, is not particularly great. It doesn't produce accurate results, and it doesn't always produce the results you want it to. So having this better image generation model in Nano Banana inside Photoshop is a great move. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Now there's going to be plenty more videos coming all about Nano Banana and the new video models which are hitting the market like Sora 2. Now, if you want to know about these things, then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can watch these upcoming videos when they're released. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Any questions at all, leave them in the comments and whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.